to the paws now. I'm actually using a mix of some purple and some Payne's Gray, so it's kind of a deep dark purple. And again, dry brushing. You notice I left this lighter edge along the top of the tail. I'm going to try maintaining that as I do the rest of my shading here. Mixing in a little bit more Payne's Gray, so moving more towards the gray end of things again. building up this shadow along the hindquarters of the cat. As I mentioned before, keeping in mind the direction of the fur because among other things this shading is actually also adding fur texture. Now taking clean water on my brush and just using that to blend this upper edge area, actually all of this area, blending these tones. This smooths out some of that texture, but as long as you don't have too much water on your brush, you can make sure to maintain some of it and not obliterate it all. Because I like to have a little bit, but I don't need it to be quite so pronounced over here. And I'm going to then also shade this side of things. You see that brown, that golden toned wash that I laid down earlier shows through and so it adds a richness to the shading because then you have the layered colors interacting. And that's one of the wonderful things about layering glazes with watercolors is that you get this interaction of your various layers and a complexity to the tone results. Just building up layers of dry brush in my shadows. Each successive layer uh, lends its own bit of subtlety to the tones.
a little too much red there. You see I moved back and forth between dry brush and washes. Dry brush layers, wash layers. And I sort of am not too careful about my keeping my colors pure unless I want a really shocking tone somewhere to brighten things up. I, I frequently have my my mixing dish, this <laughs> a mix of a lot of mixed colors. And I find that I can get lots of subtle neutral tones by doing that because as the colors start to blend with each other, you get grays and you get browns, which it's just not good, like I said, if you want to have bright colored tones somewhere. But if you are trying to create some complicated shadow tones, it is very nice to have these little corners on your palette that have mixtures that you probably could never recreate again if you wanted to. But I like to use those for shading. The first time I started doing botanical art, and botanical art is very exact. I mean, botanical artists will frequently create these color charts where they have matched the exact tones of their subject matter because you want to have it as, as close to the actual subject that you're painting as possible. And you do that by using a live specimen and sometimes your live specimen is not going to last very long, especially if you have to cut it. So if you have it in front of you, what you do is for the first several hours of working, you are mainly and only focused on trying to match the colors. And once you have the exact color mixture tone figured out, you write it down and you make this chart where you have all this information. Now, yeah, I, I go in there with my crazy color palette with colors everywhere. <laughs> And I swear that the teacher, uh, the instructor of this workshop, she took one look at my palette and she had this horrified look on her face as if to say, how can you possibly paint anything with that? <laughs> I've definitely gotten a lot better about keeping my palettes with the colors separated and not having a big mixed mess. But they're not pristine. This is it's not a wash, it's not dry brush, it's kind of something in between where I have liquid on my brush but not enough for the paint to really move around. sort of blending things in and adding a little bit of shape and definition as well as I go. Zooming into those little paws where I'm finally going to add a last little bit of sharp detail. Most most things in this piece have been very fuzzy and out of focus, but I do want to add some definition for the paws. So 
So I've got my, my size zero round brush, one that has a good point on it instead of my older one that I'm using for dry brushing. And that way I can get a nice defined little bit on the tips of the paws for the toes. And I'm taking my the brush that I was using for dry brushing and I'm getting water on it just water and I'm using it to lift the very tips of these toes a tiny little bit not lifting entirely but just it helps to blend things soften the edges give it more of a sculpted rounded shape more like a highlighted form. One final thing I think this needs is just a little bit of dry brush along the bottom edge of the tail, giving it this sense of shadowed fur for the bottom edge, and maybe even a little bit of a shadow on my ground. I wasn't really going to do any background, but I think it needs to be anchored to the ground at least. I want something. So I'm going to add a little bit underneath the paws as well. Since I went down this route with shadow, that means I need to add this curled little ground shadow for the tail. Blending things a little bit with water. Blending the part underneath the paws as well. And here we go. I think he is done. <laughs>